This video will be comparing the mathematics involved in IV infusion situations. More specifically, in this video, I will briefly compare IV infusions administered via an IV pump and those infusions administered with gravity, also referred to as manual sets. We will also discuss the concept of the drop factor, which refers to the calibration of the tubing used in gravity infusions. And we will end with a few examples of IV rate calculations. Let's first consider an IV infusion administered by an IV pump. In these situations, the fluid in the IV bag drips into the drip chamber and the IV tubing and then slowly infuses into the patient. The speed of the infusion, that is, how fast the fluid drips into the chamber and into the patient, is regulated and controlled by an infusion pump. These infusions require electricity to power the pump and regulate the infusion. In order to set the pump accurately, the nurse would enter the volume to be infused and the infusion time into the pump settings. These values are then used to calculate the rate administered in units of milliliter per hour. As an example, suppose this 100 ml IV bag was required to infuse over three hours. The nurse would enter the volume to be infused into the pump as well as the infusion time. The rate is then calculated by considering the ratio of volume over time. This ratio simplifies to 33.3 milliliters per hour. The IV pump would then regulate the infusion so that the patient receives 33.3 milliliters every hour. Another type of infusion is one in which electricity is not required to infuse the fluid into the patient. Instead of being regulated by a pump, these infusions use the force of gravity. A clamp on the tubing is used to manually adjust the speed in the chamber. Let's now consider the mathematics and calculations involved in these gravity infusion situations. First, it is very important for the nurse to consider the specific tubing calibration that is available, since there are multiple varieties each impacting the size of the drop that falls into the drip chamber. For example, consider the tubing on the screen. The packaging notes that this tubing has a drop factor, or calibration, of 15 drops per ml. This means that for every milliliter in the IV bag, this tubing will break that milliliter into 15 drops. This IV tubing has a drop factor of 60 drops per ml meaning that each milliliter of fluid will be broken into 60 drops. As you might notice, these drops are much smaller compared to those with the 15 drop per ml tubing, since each milliliter is being broken into more drops. When calculating the flow rate for these gravity infusion situations, the nurse will need to consider the rate as a ratio of volume over time. This is no different than the calculations we saw for the IV pump. However, when using gravity, the volume we are interested in is a measure of total drops. The denominator for these calculations is the infusion time in minutes. Together, this ratio will simplify to a unit rate of drops per minute. Before moving on to an IV rate calculation, let's first make sure we understand the drop factor, and how it is incorporated into these IV flow rate calculations. Let's consider this 500 ml IV bag. Suppose this bag is ordered to infuse with the tubing that is provided. In order to calculate the infusion rate, we might first want to consider the total number of drops that will infuse. The tubing provided has a drop factor or calibration of 10 drops per ml which means that each of the 500 mLs in this bag will be broken into 10 drops. So writing this out, the 500 milliliters is multiplied by 10, since each milliliter becomes 10 drops. 500 times 10 is 5,000. This means this 500 mL bag is equivalent to 5,000 drops using this tubing that's provided. Now you try. Suppose we are given different tubing with a drop factor of 15 drops per ml. 
What is the total volume of this infusion in drops? Pause the video for a moment to calculate the total volume in drops. The calculation is 500 ml times 15 drops per ml. 500 times 15 is 7,500. The volume of this bag with the given tubing is 7,500 drops. Now recall that calculating the total volume in drops is important because we want to identify the appropriate rate of drops per minute. That is, if we know the total number of drops in the bag, and we know the infusion time in minutes, we can write this as a ratio, perform the division, and arrive at a rate in drops per minute. Let's explore this with an example. We have a 250 ml bag of NS that's ordered to infuse over five hours, and we are given the following tubing. We see on the packaging that the calibration of this tubing is 20 drops per ml. Just like the rates we calculated for an IV pump, we want to consider a ratio of total volume over time. That is, we want the volume to be infused in drops and the infusion time provided in a unit of minutes. If we have these values, we can perform the division to arrive at an accurate unit rate. If you'd like, please pause the video to attempt this calculation. In this situation, the volume to be infused is 250 mLs. Using 20 drops per mL tubing, this 250 mL bag becomes 5,000 drops. The infusion time is 5 hours. We know there are 60 minutes in 1 hour, so 5 hours times 60 minutes per hour is equivalent to 300 minutes. We now have a ratio of 5,000 drops over 300 minutes, the total volume divided by the total time. Performing this division, we arrive at 16.6 repeating drops each minute. Now, as the nurse, I would have to adjust the roller clamp on the tubing and then count the drops that are falling in the chamber. I would need to make sure there are about 16.6 repeating drops falling each minute. Now, I'm not able to calculate a fraction of a drop with my eyes, so that is why it's appropriate that we round these drop per minute rates to the nearest whole number. In this case, 16.6 repeating rounds to 17 drops per minute. 